for everybody. If you're not, no, <laughs> then uh, <laughs> yeah. you don't have to be here. Okay, Steve. So what's going on, man? Oh yeah, just been playing a lot. Good, good, yeah, very good. Cool. Doing a lot of playing, and then you know, I need to get back to the hand stuff. You know, being getting up there, so locked into playing the music, and then it's like, oh, I've been falling off a little bit. You know, with the practicing. Absolutely. Very cool. You have a specific question that you want to you want to talk about before we uh, jump into to, to this stuff? Well, no, I just noticed like, you know, you know, when I'm playing live, I see like, uh, you know, I've been getting like more comfortable with the songs. But then it's I'm still like having problems trying to like, you know, really uh, execute some of these. Uh, I hate to say like chops and stuff like that out live because, you know, I, I'm seeing that it's like the my, my foundation is, is kind of weak. I watched your video and I've seen that then. I right. was noticing how it's gotten really uh, sloppy for, like, I guess, lack of like a better term, you know, it's in my mind, but I can't make my hands do it. Right, 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 right. I gotcha. <laughs> okay, so, so, so Steve's question for all the guys that, that can't hear what's happening on, on in the Instagram side. Uh, yeah, he's just talking about the foundation thing. And it's such a common story. If you, you watch my video, I mean, that was me. That was, I was all over that. <laughs> you know, I was great at sticking stuff. I was great at flying around the kit. Uh, I loved all the Weckle licks. I used to figure them out. I used to ask my teacher. I used to take the rudiments, put them on the kit. Uh, but I had no good rhythmic foundation. So there was no time happening. And that was the biggest crux of the issues when I was a young player. Is uh, I was very fast and flashy, but the time wasn't my main thing. The sticking was the main thing. So I sat there and practiced paradiddles. And I practiced like, you know, inverted paradiddles and combinations around the drums. Um, so going back to things like rhythm, and really, really studying rhythm, really understanding what rhythm is and, and, and understanding your table of time, all your notes, the rhythm chart, I call it, uh, and, and outlining that. And it's not just knowing the notes individually. You got to be able to get from this note to that note uh, in any position, at any tempo, instantly. You got to know that transition like you know your name. That, for me, was the hardest thing. That was the hardest thing to figure out. Okay? Uh, there's somebody that's got a mic on. If you could do me, do me a favor and just mute that. Um, yeah, so I, I would I, I for you, I, I would go back to that because that was the one thing that really, really, really stood out uh, that made a difference in my playing. Does that make sense, Steve? Yeah, 100%. Yes, it does. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, you're nailing it exactly. <laughs> and that's what it is, you know. And, and unfortunately, it's a common thing. You know, George is up here. Everyone say hi to me, George. And if you don't follow Skinny George Martinez on Instagram and TikTok, everyone should be following him. He's a a drum core cat and he, he plays the, uh, um, what are they called? George, help me out. Um, I'm having a brain fart, uh, tenor drums. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he's just a monster with the hands. So, I mean, if you're into that style of playing with the, uh, the drum core thing, the marching thing, it's a little bit of a different world from what I do. Uh, I steal from it. I borrow from it. I'm definitely a hack when it comes to marching. Uh, there are definitely guys in here that are amazing with that level. Um, so can you, can you can you attest to that also george did you have similar things with with uh with rhythm versus sticking yeah i mean the you know you, you i mean you nailed it right on the head you know like i think sometimes and and steve to your to your point and your question um, i think a lot of times if you don't start building the foundation correctly you're going to hear a lot of really cool riffs a lot of really cool things that you're like oh i, I I think I know how to do that. But then when you go to actually apply it to a song, you're like, wait a second, I really actually don't because you've got to really kind of like dissect, you know, melodically and time-wise and, and rhythmically, what is actually making that sound as cool as it is? Where is the accent? What, you know, all of that stuff. Because sometimes it happens to me all the time where I'm like, hey, I got, I got something in my head, but I've got to hash it out. I've got to write it out and just really understand it, make my brain understand it before my hands actually do it you know so yeah for sure you nailed it on the head Jim. yeah cool all right great let's uh let's uh get another question somebody want to does it we let me see if we have anything uh queued up here in the in the chat going on here uh going up okay not so much in the chat but let's uh if someone to raise their hand anyone else have a question before we move on yeah i don't right. even know if you could hear me uh, yeah, we could hear everyone, but what I want everyone to do, if we could, just to keep it organized, there's a little hand raise button on the bottom of your, your when you mouse over the screen. 
probably on your phone. If you touch it, it'll enable that. Just raise your hand. That way you could unmute your, you can unmute your mic and I'll call on you if that's okay. But uh, uh, who's who is next? Barry, you said you had something. Yeah, I I wanted to. I I watched your video. I thought the video that you presented was great. The two questions from you were talking about molar. I wanted to hear everybody's opinion on is molar good for them, or do they find that it's just for chops and speed? That's a great question. That's basically, that's yeah, the that's idea. Exactly. Like I've been. I've been studying molar. I've been using it for years and it's great for chops, sure. but I don't see it as a, a way for me to be a subtle player because okay. it's all speed, you know? Well, so, you know, it, 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 there's two sides of the coin with that. So when we talk about the molar method, so the question here again for you guys on Instagram is about the molar method and is molar something that everyone should study uh, and get into? Uh, I would say studying every aspect of drawing is important. I mean, especially when it comes to technique, uh, I don't call molar molar as much because I've studied with so many teachers that didn't study with you know, that molar method, but it's a, they use a similar thing. So I was taught to call it formal, which is like your marching playing, which is what George is talking about. And then your informal, which is like that whipping motion. And that's what the molar technique is based on. It's based about this flow. Um, so is that important? Yes. I mean, depending on what you want to do, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change your sound. I wouldn't say it's just for chops. Will it give you great chops? Yeah, because <laughs> there's a secret there in, in the sense that you're you're doing, you know, a quarter of the work and then the, the momentum of the stick is is doing the rest of the work for you. And if you could control that and you have all this happening, I'm, I'm doing this, but I'm getting that with the molar because it's all bounce. The challenge, the other side of that is if you don't have the physicality to back up that bounce, you're all fast, you're all chops. And if you try to slow it down, it doesn't feel right, you know, because your muscles don't know how to come in and fill in those gaps between, you know, the molar motion and all those bounces. So you have to kind of have both sides worked out, the formal and the informal. And I put that into the accent category. Again, to reiterate to everybody um, what this first lesson is about in foundation, the most important things are rhythm, accents, and sticking. And I would say in that order, I think if you boil anything in drumming down, if you look at a piece of sheet music on the drums, it's going to write for you the rhythm, which is the notes, the accents, which are your louds and softs and your dynamics and all that. And then you're sticking, your rights and your lefts, your feet, your sound sources, all that. Everything on drums boils down to those three things. So if you understand those things like, you know, like, like I said before, like you know your name, then you're a master drummer. Now, that seems simplistic because <laughs> it takes years and years and years and years to really master all three of those things. But I think clarity and understanding that those are the things you should be focusing on is the most important thing. And the biggest thing I've seen with my students over the years is everyone comes in with sticking first. Sticking is like the main thing. And then it's like accents and rhythm are kind of like uh, an afterthought. And it really should be the opposite of that. It should be all about rhythm, then accents, and then sticking. Okay? Um, molar is inside of the accent category because it's all about louds and softs. This molar whip, this whole thing, it's going to give you a lot of power, uh, depending on what you're doing. If you're on the drum set, this whole vibe is going to give you a much laid back, much more laid back kind of behind the beat kind of vibe versus this, which is more like into the drum. But th they're both very valid, depending on what you're doing, you know? So not everybody lives here. Some people like, you could do a combination. This could be straight, and then this could be doing the whip thing. This is going to lend itself more to those ghost notes. It's going to be a lot less physical when all that ghost note stuff is happening. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's all for speed. It can definitely, definitely help when it comes to speed and flow and all that kind of stuff because, you know, you don't push. Here's the challenge with molar. And I've done videos like this. I don't know if anyone's seen that video on YouTube where I said, don't do molar. And I got a lot of hell <laughs> from everyone that, that read that headline and didn't, and didn't watch the video. Um, so I'm not saying molar's bad or you shouldn't do molar. What I, the, the warning that I'm issuing there is that if you make molar your main thing, you, you lose out on that physical aspect. And that's what was happening to me. You know, again, with the stickings. The stickings were there. Co in combination with the molar, I was able to go really fast. When it came down to physical speed, I didn't have that. I didn't have that developed because I didn't sit there and I didn't do the, the skinny George exercises. <laughs> you know, that stuff. That, you know, and that is so important to develop those muscles and understand all the different gears that are happening in your arms and working that all out. You know, and luckily I had teachers that were able to kind of 
point me in that right direction. Um, and that that's mind opening. Okay. So I wouldn't discount molar. I think molar is a very important thing. It shouldn't be the main thing, but it should be definitely something that you have in your tool chest. If that, if that makes sense, Barry, is that, that clear. Good. Cool. Yeah. It does. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, and I see my regular guys are in here. Graham, Angelo. I'm sure, I'm sure Glenn might be in here somewhere. <laughs> I, I, there's only so many people I can see on the screen. I can't really, can I have a head count of how many people are in here? There might be only 10 or 11 guys in here, which is kind of good because at that point we could actually have everyone, you know, chime in a little bit. Good. Um, Floyd has his hand raised. Let's see what Floyd has to say. Or was that from before? Maybe Floyd doesn't hear me. <laughs> That's okay. Anybody else have a have a question or want want to want to ask me something in in relation to the lesson or just in general about stuff that's coming up? Nobody got anything. Well, that's, that's they all got the mute sign. Yeah. Well, that's okay. All muted. Raise your hand. Hit the hand raise button if you have a Jay. Can can you hear me, Jay? Yeah, I got you, Glenn. Yeah, this is Glenn. Uh I can't believe I even did this correctly enough to see all you guys and hear you. <laughs> Welcome. I just I just realized my mic's been yeah. off the whole time. Yeah. I don't know what any of these symbols mean that I'm looking at. Yeah. Uh, all you guys, it's Barry, and you made some great points about all these techniques with your hands, molar. I mean, I guess if you're doing a somber at a thousand miles an hour, then you need the molar. I heard a lot of terms for what I think is the same thing with using your hands and your fingers. I've heard push, pull, open, close, yep. drop, catch. The drop, <laughs> catch was a Tony Williams thing. Uh, I think they all mean the same thing. And I don't know if you can start taking advantage of any of that technique until your hands are actually ready for it. And at the point your hands are ready for it, I think you'll start doing it naturally. Uh, yeah, yes and no. I mean, the more you focus on it and the more you make it a thing, uh, again, this is the challenge that I see with students, uh, cause a lot of times they, they take some of this technique for granted. They, they, it's like the kind of thing that, oh, that'll happen eventually. And they're, you're not wrong. If you're not taught the molar method, you're going to start doing molar as you get better because the molar method is not something that, that Sanford Augustus molar made up. Okay. It's something that he watched marching drummers do when they went for really fast speed. When, when, when they crossed some kind of threshold where the physicality wasn't allowing them to do it, he, they were doing this. They were starting to throw and bounce. And he started cataloging that and then kind of zooming out on it and making it these big motions. And it, get, it gave him a lot of power. But by focusing on that technique, he was able to just hone it that much you know, tighter and get it that much more under his hands. Same thing goes with all these other techniques. And you're right, terminology wise, the, the terminology is the same <laughs> for a lot of this stuff. Really also, Skinny made a great point about foundations that uh, I have an utter lack of. Playing 25 years, I've got two months of lessons mm -hmm. under my belt. What Four weeks from one guy and four weeks from another guy. Right. I, I won't bother naming them on this. By the way, I'm sitting in my car and talking to you guys on a, on my phone, which is not <laughs> even a good phone. That's why I can't believe I'm even connected to you. Uh, Jay, I wanted to, I actually didn't have anything to ask. I was going to give up my turn to whomever else. But since you since you all are there, uh, once I figure out something, I'm really not interested in it anymore. <laughs> and lately, really tough nut to crack for me. And I know what the table of time is. Obviously, I know what subdivisions are, but this has been hard for me to do, especially since I'm not even using a metronome. Right. Beat displacement, whether it's on your kick or your snare, you know, rhythmic shift right. uh, and, and implied modulations. No tempo changes. It just sounds like you're speeding up and right. slowing down. I think that's called implied metric modulation. Yeah. But uh, this is funny. I heard. In a Drumeo video, Greg Bissonette made a joke about something, and I didn't know what it was. And I looked it up, and it's uh, some type of rhythmic shift. He made a joke. He said, I hope I don't have to play uh, any beats that have a hemiola. <laughs> okay, yeah. And I had never heard of a hemiola. 
It's a and it's some player. type of shift in the rhythm. I don't know. Maybe you can explain that a little bit. Humiola is just a three colon two polyrhythm. So it's it's triplets over eighth notes. Humiola. Okay, a good good way to think of a hemiola is um, Carol of the Bells, the Christmas song. Da 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 da. Yeah. Da, 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 da. That. So this idea of you're playing three here, one two three one, and then two one two one two one two one. That's, that's like a three a against two poly. That's it. That's all hemiola is. It's very common in music, so they gave it its own name. Sometimes people or that's, three. That's all that three. is. That's all it is. That's all hemiola. That's is. all that is. Is the three that's two poly. Is. That's it. That's all it is. That's just. Oh, name. man. Like okay. Said, terminology. It's all about terminology, right? So, so many names oh. for the same thing, right? And, and it's, huh. it gets confusing with the push pull. Now, the push pull, again, is, is kind of molar. It's, it's in that, it's taking a molar whip, a molar two, which is this down, up, down, up, down, up. And it's just breaking that down to the whip just being in your fingers when you're here. Right. That's all it is. You know, I got a great piece of advice. Yeah. All right, I'll tell you, the, the first guy I took four lessons from, one a week for a month, I'm in New York City. I'm in, uh, I'm at the beach, sure. at the ocean. But I went out to Long Island, took a couple of lessons for a month from this guy, Chet DeBeau. Yep, I know great, sure. great, great instructor. Uh, he told me something. He saw, he, I had to play for him the first time we met and he saw my hand on the ride symbol. My whole wrist, my whole hand was turning sideways, was slanting. And he, he goes, why are you doing that? I didn't even realize it. What, and I was, had such a bad habit. And he said, knuckles up, palms down. Mm -hmm. And that was a great piece of advice. <laughs> he also made, he also made my double strokes better. Yeah. Some, something that he called an arm drop technique, which is for an intermediate, you're dropping your arm from the elbow. You right. come more advanced, it's, you're using your fingers. It's all fingers and wrist. Exactly. But Chet was fantastic. Yeah. And, and uh, knuckles up, great. palms down. But yeah. I notice when you start trying to use your fingers for this push, pull, open, close, drop, catch, it's easier to start slanting your wrist, which I don't want to do. You start losing control. When you, if you don't keep knuckles up, palms down, you're going to lose control. Well, and, that, that's but a good, that makes it harder to get your fingers into it. I don't know. I've been struggling with these techniques for the last five, five years, 10 years now. So, so guys that know me, again, some of the guys in this group here, you know, I, I studied with a drummer named Frank Bellucci. Frank is actually going to be going up and doing. I, I know Frank, Frank Bellucci. You know, Frank I know Bellucci. him real well, Jay. Okay. So uh, also, the, yeah. the second guy I took a few lessons with was Rod Morgenstein. Oh, okay. Yeah. In Long Island also. Very cool. Yeah, yeah Rob, right. right. From uh, the Long Island Drum Center in Comac. Yeah. But, uh, and I know Frank Bellucci, uh, like personally, kind of. Yeah. We, we, I see him every summer in Long Beach when he does a whole bunch of gigs that we all show up for. Okay. But Absolutely. go so, ahead. Anybody, anybody else, or you could elaborate on yeah, how yeah, to yeah. get those techniques more efficient because I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with them. Right. So, so, again, talking about someone like Frank, you know, I, I used to be uh, kind of in the head from studying with different teachers that there's like one way, you know, you hold the sticks or I was taught this. I don't know about you, George, if that was my original way of holding the stick was elbow to the tip of the stick. You make a straight line. That was the original way I was taught. Uh, that led to a bad habit of me coming in here. And that's how I, I used to play when I was a younger player, match grip. I didn't play traditional. Uh, and I played here and I just, it kind of turned into that after a while. Um, right, I was told your forearm should be parallel to the floor. Okay. But here's the thing. When I went to someone like Bellucci, um, he was a very big proponent in knowing every form, understanding everything, you know, uh, and he could still do it. I'm sure you've seen lessons where he's done that, where he'll he'll play in a, a German format here, which is what he made me do, which doesn't lend itself so much to the fingers. Then the French form, you know, in here, where you have this kind of thing going, the Americanized form is kind of somewhere in between. It kind of sits there. And that's where most, most dr modern drummers are kind of playing in that form. But his whole thing was like understanding that entire range and making everything feel natural. The only rule was not to do anything unnatural with your wrist. So his whole thing was like, you want to be strong. If you, your hand is like this, like and a conga player makes this triangle on the conga like that. That's like the first right. thing they teach. But you notice that put your hand in a straight line. Notice my middle finger is in line with my thumb, with my, my elbow, not my thumb, which is what you learn as a drummer. You learn this elbow to, to stick and that puts your thumb in line but that also twists your wrist it puts your wrist in this awkward 
tense position. You don't have as much strength here. Here, when you're like this, this is where you have strength. If you just grab your fist like this, if you twist it and grab your wrist, you lose strength. So the, it's the idea of, of keeping yourself in this natural position. That's where your strength comes from. Then depending on where you are, if you're in a German grip, you're still here, but your thumb's on top. If you're in a, a German grip, I'm sorry, I said French grip, you know, you're still like this. If you're in a German grip, you're here, your thumb's on the side and you're utilizing a little bit more of this twisting motion. You see that? Yes. Yeah. So, so, but in the French grip, you're not doing any of that. You're still twisting, but you're twisting this way if you're using your wrist and you're not using any wrist if you're using your fingers. But this fundamental, this thing straight is, is the only thing that he ever said, you know, you want to just make sure your arm is in a natural position, and then learn every form. Because when you're on the drum set, I mean, you, you got to be, say you're playing jazz, you're here. You know, your right hand could be in a, a French position. Your left hand could be in a German position and you're doing that. So yeah. depending on how you're moving around, your form is changing all over the place. So when you're on the pad, it's great to learn and practice in all those different forms, but do it on purpose, not accidentally. So when you do it accidentally without thinking about it, that's when you develop horrible habits. Okay. If that, if that makes sense. All right. Yeah. Cool. That's great. Yeah. Yep. Good, man. Needs Great a lot of work on the pad. <laughs> yeah, it's all it's all about pad work. Uh, Glenn, uh, not Glenn, uh, Angela, what do you got? Hang on, get rid of my hand. <laughs> Everyone say hi. Uh, yeah, look, um, um, I don't know. I've been a, a student of uh, Jay's for about uh, four years. Uh, started playing drums uh, when I was, um, could pick up some sticks really and could afford to, purchase them um so that's 40 years ago oh yeah 40 years ago um in those days we didn't have drum books we didn't have a drum kit we used to play on the uh, cardboard boxes um no drum teachers couldn't afford drum kits all that stuff and i guess there's a few of guys here with the same sort of story um so i never and all we did was uh, turn the radio on and wait for a song to come on that we liked and try to play along with it um, and had no idea what we were doing. We just played. Um, so 50 years later or 55 years later, I uh, came across uh, the internet and um, there were all these teachers out there and um, I'll get to the question in a minute, Jay. Uh, there are all these internet uh, drum teachers out there and they're all brilliant and they all do these wonderful things. But what makes you, Jay, different to anyone else on the internet? Why would I, why did I, why did I want to learn from you more than anyone else? You're muted. That's a good question. That, that's a tough question, but that's definitely a good one. Um, so basically what you're saying is why am, why am I different than any other drum teacher on the internet? Uh, and and the, the, there's no such thing when you get to a certain level, especially with teachers, as better, okay? This guy's not better than that guy. Everyone's just got a different method. They, they focus on different things. I never stayed with one teacher for too long. I always stayed with one teacher maybe for a year, maybe two if it was a great teacher. Uh, and then I would always jump to a different perspective because a different teacher is just gonna always give you a completely different perspective. Um, what I have to offer, uh, again, through my story, if anyone's watched the video, I don't know how, how many of you have been through that first lesson, where I talk about the trials that went through um, going into college and that whole audition situation. Um, that taught me how to go back to foundation. Um, after someone that, that thought they kind of were advanced. Turns out I wasn't advanced because my foundation sucked. Uh, so what I do with all my students that's probably different from a lot of other teachers is I hammer foundation. We get into lessons and I go right back to the beginning, even with advanced guys. I'll go right back down to that rhythm chart and we we hammer that rhythm chart. That's what the app is about. And Angelo knows this because he's in he's in my app. Um, it's about, you know, working out. It's doing those repetitive stick control type of exercises or the rhythm chart exercise or the accent exercises where you're really focusing on accents. Not just I'm hitting this one louder, but understanding the setup where I'm I'm going to be in a formal style. So I'm, it's going to be a marching style and I'm going to do a downstroke, a tap stroke, an upstroke and a tap stroke. And I'm going to know that that's what this pattern is. I'm not just going to say this one's loud and these are soft. So the difference is really getting in there and really owning those foundations when you do all that consistently. And that's the key. The key is consistency. That, that's really the, the, the way to master anything, not even just drums, 
But the guys that are great drummers, like George up there, you know, he's consistent. And he'll tell you, I'm sure he'll tell you the same thing. It, it's not that he's so talented, because he is super talented, but he's also super diligent and super consistent. And that's the trick. The trick is, but it's also being consistent on the right things. And I think a teacher like me that, that, that is different from maybe some other teachers is that I'm going to focus on those foundations and make sure those are really solid before we go to the, the, the icing on the cake, before we get into those stickings. George, uh, interject, please. Yeah, I think just to, to um, which it's a, it's, a, it's a fair question because, you know, like everybody is a drum teacher on the internet. You right. know, like everybody <laughs> is like a, a, a drum expert. You know, everybody's like, hey, just join my email list and you'll become great. And, um, but to kind of add, at, at least from my perspective, uh, Angelo, I think that's, that was your name that you asked. Um, I've seen a whole lot of drum teachers. I've, I've taught myself. I've been a student with many different uh, teachers in the, in the past and all of that. And something that the reason why I gravitate toward Jay, um, no matter what level you're at, doesn't matter what my background is, what I can or can't do, or doesn't, none of that matters. Um, at the end of the day, what I really appreciate about Jay and what always blows my mind about Jay's videos is how clear, concise, and how easy he communicates a very complex thing and makes it something that's easy to digest and then gives me the inspiration to actually go ahead and try it. Um, I think some, where some drum teachers lack, um, what a lot of drum teachers do, they have a lot of the knowledge, but they don't know how to communicate it into a way at whatever level you're at that you can actually digest that and then actually try to reproduce it. Um, you know, even when it's like when he, you know, he has some videos about like uh, the Mashuga thing and all these weird, all these crazy things that he tries to like, like transcribe and all of that. The way his concept of being able to show you how to break down very complex things into little small bites that you can digest and actually try to replicate. I mean, for me anyway, um, that's why I gravitate toward Jay's style because there's things that I, that he does that makes no sense to me because I have my strengths and I have my weaknesses. He has strengths where I have very, very big weaknesses. And when he tries to, when he, when he starts to c communicate some of that stuff, some of the polyrhythm modulation stuff, all that, I sit there and I'm like, this is one of the best drum teachers on the internet because I never thought I would ever be able to really understand this concept, but because of the way he has been wired to communicate, you know, that's what makes Jay, Jay. So anyway, wow. George, thanks, man. That, that means that means so much coming from you because I have so much respect for you as a player uh, and a teacher and, and and your content too, man. I mean, you know, same same everything you're saying about me, I could reverse and say the same about you. Uh, just looking at the stuff that you do, like, same thing. It just blows my mind. Again, the physicality, the speed, the the cleanliness of what you do. Um, it, it's it's again it goes back to that being diligent and like you know hammering those fundamentals. That's unbelievable. Angela, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to add, and like I was a guy that never practiced, and I can I can understand where uh, some of you are coming from there. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I really never practiced, literally never practiced. I just went to the went to band practice and played the song, played along, and whatever came out came out, and then um, went to the gig, and that was the uh, practice. But um, so for the past four years, I've been basically been doing, uh, let, all right, I'll, I'll average it out, let's say two hours every day for four years. Um, why? Because I practice with Jay. And what, he, what I mean by that is that on every module that he has, he has um, play-alongs. You play with Jay. You practice with Jay. Whatever you need to practice, you practice with him. It's not a book, uh, you know, go and study out of this book and you look at the first line and you give up. You don't even practice for five minutes. Whereas with Jay, you practice with him, uh, all the various BPMs that you improve over time. And to me, that was the foundation for me to actually start practicing was to practice with him. So I have breakfast with Jay every morning. Um, I give him heaps at times, but he doesn't hear me for some reason. But anyway, um, <laughs> I'll pass it back to somebody else. <laughs> that, that's, that's awesome, Angela. And, and it's funny because, you know, I don't know if George doesn't know necessarily the system that, that uh, you know, I have you guys all in uh, or some of these guys that are here are already in the app and already been doing that. Uh, before it was the app, it was the Drummer's Almanac, which is my handle on, on, in, on social media. 
it's that website. Um, so yeah, Angela has been there for, for about four years. And that concept was born out of one of my students. Uh, one of my students, his name was Bill Rosvanis. I don't know. I haven't seen him in years. Uh, I'd love to talk to him again. But I remember him coming to me and saying that, you know, in lessons, we do these stick control exercises and, I, and they're clear and they're great. If I do it right with you, we do it together. It's almost like that drum core camaraderie, right? You're working on exercises with the group. You have that group mentality where everyone's trying to be accurate and everyone's trying to stay together. Uh, and he, he's like, I love that in lessons. Then I go home to practice it and I fall apart. And then I don't practice because I'm like, I'm not doing it right. It's not clear. He's like, I wish I could just take you home with me every day and practice with you. <laughs> so that got me thinking, maybe I should just record some of these exercises and, you know, let him log into a website and, and start practicing along with me. And that's kind of the start of my website. That's, that's where it came from. Um, I never thought in a million years it would turn into a whole education system where it's like, I'd have to put lessons in there. And, you know, so some of those lessons in there are from like 2014 or 2013. I recorded some of those. I have a lot more hair, but, uh, but yeah, that, that, that was always the concept. And I'm glad that resonates with you, Angelo, because that's, that's really the premise. That's really what I'm trying to do with this app. And that's another thing that's going to differentiate, I think, hopefully from what other guys are doing in education where they tell you, here's the technique, now go practice it. My thing's more about, here's the technique, let's practice it together at all different tempos. You know, so that, that's kind of where I'm coming from. But yeah, thanks, man. That means, again, means, means the world to me because uh, you're one of the guys that's been doing this for a long time and really holding it down. So cool. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, and before, before we get into another question, just for my guys on Instagram, because I know you guys are watching uh, and you probably can't hear the guys that are in my Google meet right now. So they're, they're talking and we're going back and forth. So I apologize to you guys that you can't hear one side of the conversation. It looks like I'm just kind of staring into outer space. Um, but if you want to join these calls and get more into these, I'm going to be doing a few more of these uh, bouncing off of some of the lessons that I'm putting out, but you have to be part of the email community. So all these guys that I'm talking to right now are in my Google meet in my private room. Uh, and they're all part of the email community. So if you want to join this workshop, even though we've done lesson one, uh, I'm going to leave it up all week. So it's going to be up there. So you can retroactively go back and take that lesson whenever you want. But to get on my email community, just go into my profile here on Instagram and just click the link. I put the link right up there. So click that, go through that. They'll, it'll also give you a chance to go through my drum foundation challenge, which is kind of the topic that we're talking about here, uh, where it's going to really ask you some really seemingly basic questions about foundation, but you'd be very surprised at how unclear you might have those foundations, okay? So definitely go in there, join the email group, take that challenge, and then jump into this workshop. I think it's going to be a really, really beneficial thing uh, for you to go through. So that's, again, for my Instagram people. Let's go back to uh, my, my Google Meet guys over here. Uh, Graham, we haven't heard from you. Tell us what's going on up there. I, I can't believe it's got to be super late where you are right now. Yes, it is quite late. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite tired as well, but, you know, got back from band practice, and then I saw the email, so I thought, oh, come on. Let's join the call, see what's going down in Chinatown. Yeah, awesome. That's it. Yeah. Well, Graham is also a drum teacher, and he's currently uh, in Germany, right? And, yeah, um, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, he was, Graham was, we, we met on my mentorship program, the first round of my mentorship. Uh, he came through, and now he's just become like one of one of the guys. So he's, he's definitely uh, one of these guys around here. Do you have anything that you want to add to this, this discussion with the uh, with, uh, with foundation? Just like if you want to, want to uh, uh, like if I want to add to anything about the app, it's, uh, I can just, um, agree with Angelo um, that the best way is just to sit with the app and get on it. And even if you're advanced or even if you're a beginner, there's no difference. You still got to put the work in. So there's no way around it. Just get on and do it. And it's a lot easier if someone's there that's put all the stuff up there and can give you a little roadmap and put you in your place to find out, can I do this? Can I, can I do that? And there's a definitely a good way of measuring where you're at through all the exercises that are on the app. Absolutely. Uh, pretty well put together. A lot yeah. easier to find in one place than scour through thousands of books and, and <laughs> try to put it together. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that again, that's the goal. That's the goal. Having, having a place where everyone can go there. It's not convoluted. Um, clarity is king. And that that's the one big takeaway that I, I, I could say from that first lesson, from focusing on foundation. Uh, I was lost when I got into college. I mean, I was lost. Uh, and I thought I was hot shit. Not, not for nothing. I thought I was like this great drummer, this great high school player. Like, oh man, I, I could play so great in the music store. 
you know, or at the talent show, the high school talent show, do a drum solo. And I did, I could sound fast. And all the kids were like, well, then when I got on the bandstand with the band, it was a mess. You know, I mean, I, my groove is okay. But then when I do a fill, I try something flashy and it would just fall apart. You know, and my college audition was just luck. I mean, it was blind, white, hot luck <laughs> that, that I got through that audition. Um, Cause I just did one of those things. I did one of those fast solos and I hit one and it just happened to be right. And all these instructors that were, you know, moderating this audition were just like, holy cow. Cause they didn't know where I was. Cause it was going so fast. They just thought I had this crazy sense of time. Um, challenge with that is when I got into college at that higher level, you couldn't hang with that, that stuff, that guessing didn't work. And that's the big thing that I see with students is the guessing. Everybody's guessing, you know, on what they're doing. Um, guys that are more pr pro then you see them on, on and they have those chops and they're doing those videos where it's like breaking down the chops. Notice that again, they focus very much on sticking because th those are quick bite sized things that you can learn. You know, they're, they're, they're so easy to find. Just do right, left, kick, kick, right, right, left, left, kick, kick, right, left, right, left. And it's like, then you practice that really fast. That's exactly what I did when I was in high school. And that's the trap. Because the most important thing to that lick is not that sticking. It's the rhythm. It's the notes that you're using and how they relate to the time. Because the time is the most important thing. Uh, and if, again, if any of you guys go through that drum foundation challenge, the conflation between rhythm and beat is huge. When I ask a student, what is rhythm? And that's the first question I ask every student that comes to me. Define rhythm to me in musical terms. How, how does a musician define rhythm? Not a layman. Nine times out of 10, they'll say beat or they'll describe the beat, the sense of time, the sense of count, the sense of pulse. That's the beat. That's not the rhythm. Okay. The rhythm is your notes. That's all it is. The rhythm is your, your understanding your vocabulary of notes, 16th notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, polyrhythms. They're all part of that rhythm vocabulary. And that is everything to a drummer. That is everything. I mean, you could, you could do away with sticking. You could do away with accents. But if you have a firm grasp, grasp on rhythm, you could play anything. You could get through an entire gig. The accents and sticking kind of add color to that. That's, that's what they do. You know, if we talk about accents, accents are adding melody to your rhythm. Uh, I use wipeout as the example, right, George? You know, so, I mean, if we just do this, that just sounds like I'm playing a bunch of notes. But if I do this, I added an accent, which gave it a melody, and bang, your ear recognizes that melody. So accents bring melody. And if you understand how to add melody to your rhythms, that adds a whole different dimension to what you're playing and what you're expressing to the audience. Because at the end of the day, everything that you're doing, it's all about taking what you're doing and then making that happen for the audience. How are they perceiving that? They don't care that you're switching rhythms. They don't care that you're using accents. They don't care about a sticking. They care about how, what that's making them feel like, what they're hearing, how it's subverting their expectation, how it's like sounding impressive. You know, it's, it's all about creating tension and resolving the tension. None of that stuff is conscious, but that's what your audience is listening for. So you have to understand what each of these techniques does for that audience member by changing the rhythm. How does that, how does that affect my audience? And what it's going to do, is going to make it sound like you're playing faster and slower without losing the beat. So the beat is constant, but you're changing the rhythms and you're getting this illusion that you're going fast and slow and fast and slow. And you have this elastic vibe when you're playing. Changing your accents brings melody. You're hearing a melody on top of those. Sticking doesn't necessarily change the sound, especially for someone like George who's on one surface. You know, if you're just on a snare drum, sticking's not going to really do much of anything, but it makes it easier to execute things. So sticking is really more about execution. It's more about getting around. Now, yes, we break that rule, <laughs> especially in drum core, right? When we do visuals and we do things that are just like, sticking crazy to make it a little more convoluted um stick control in general which is like the way you practice sticking is designed in the opposite function it's designed to make it difficult on your hands when really the function of sticking is to make it simple you know so what i mean by that like if i was to play really fast singles i could only do that so fast but if i change that sticking to doubles i could do the same sound and zero effort just by the nature of that sticking that's what sticking does. Sticking just makes it easier to execute things. So 
understanding those three concepts, how they affect your audience and then how you can use them and how you can put them together. That's everything, you know, and that's really what it takes to, to, uh, you know, master this instrument. Okay, cool. Now that I'm, I've got that out, uh, <laughs> does anyone else have any more questions that we want to raise a hand as far as what's going on with, with you know, the upcoming lesson? If, if, if not, then I'll just talk about what's happening next. But uh, and and we'll we'll start winding down here. Uh, how are we do on Instagram? We got a lot of people joining here on Instagram. I'm kind of ignoring you guys, so sorry about that. Um, but cool. Any other questions? Anyone want to want to jump yeah. in? Today, yeah, this is Glenn. Uh, hey, Glenn. All right. First of all, a after what you've said about George, now I really want to hear him his playing. <laughs> and uh, I have zero internet skill. Mm -hmm. I mean zero. Your notification to me was concise enough that I actually made it onto this platform by following the instructions. I found you through a YouTube notification. It was probably your shorts channel, one of your one of your 30 second lessons. And I thought it was so good that I just subscribed to you right away. I've been following you ever since. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, that's it. Cool, man. Well, I'm so glad to have you here. I'm so glad to have you. I mean, that's the Thank beauty you. of the internet. You know, it, it's funny, the whole journey of the internet, people have asked me that. Um, I was so anti-social media uh, a few years ago. I mean, I'm, I'm old. I don't know if, any, you know, ever, everyone will, will argue with me, especially some of the guys that I know here that are older than me. But uh, I'm old school. I don't, I never liked social media. You know, I was never into Facebook. Oh, here's Facebook. what I wanted to say to you. Yeah. Uh, you did a video that I watched where someone asked you how you do a beat breakdown. All right, whatever. You started, okay, you, man, Lala AI. Right. Uh, since when has a laptop become part of a drum kit? I suppose <laughs> it is now. Everybody's got a laptop at their drums. Everything you did in that video where you showed what you did using Lala AI and Logix or Logic, whatever, whatever that software is called. All right, I don't do any of that. I don't have any of that, and I wouldn't even know where to begin. What I'm doing to see you guys now, let me see. I can see George, Barry, all of you. You could hear me. I can, This is the most complicated thing I ever did with regards <laughs> to using a, a device. <laughs> and, well, listen, like I said, it's a common tale. I was the same exact way. It was a student of mine. It was a student of mine in 20, oh, man, it must have been 2014 or 2015, around there. I was talking to him and he was, he was saying, you know, Jay, how come you're not on YouTube? Or I was on YouTube. I was doing some stuff with Vic Firth and I, I gave them a bunch of lessons. I didn't even really have them on my YouTube channel. I just did a bunch of videos and gave it to them. Uh, they put it on their YouTube and their YouTube channel was doing great. Um, Cause I just didn't see I didn't understand the value in it. I didn't, you know, I'd put up a, that, that video. I, I did a, a Spain thing was a, um, a master's audition for it. Cause I want to get a, you know, I want to get like a master's degree. Uh, I was thinking about going to M MI and getting like a journeyman type of certificate. And um, they, they wanted an audition tape and I was going to go for a scholarship. So I put this video together. This is like 2006. And I put the video together. And one of my students back then was like, Hey Jay, there's this thing on the internet called YouTube. And I was like, all right. And he's like, yeah, you could upload videos. It's so cool. So he's like, you should take that audition video you did and just upload it. So he did it for me. He uploaded it to YouTube, made me a right. YouTube channel. And then I didn't look at it for about almost 10 years. And then the next time I looked at it, it had like 350,000 views. And I was like, whoa. But again, <laughs> it didn't even click that this was a thing to, to really do. Uh, but again, going back to 2016, there was another student that was like, you know, you should be doing this. You should be on Instagram. You should be on. And I was like, ah, man, I hate all that stuff. I can't, I can't deal with it. You know, it's not really, I'm not into that. I'm not into that whole vibe. I don't, I don't like the whole thing. I don't care what someone's having for dinner. I don't want to see that post that, oh, look, I'm eating pizza. Like, I, I don't care. You know, I was like, that's not, that's not me. And he was saying, no, man, you, you know, for education, you can reach people if you got out there. and People should reach, you know, should, should know what you're doing. Uh, and if you just start putting yourself out there, they'll start seeing the education stuff that you have. And, you know, he was really pushing me. And um, he turned me on to a couple of books. I started reading those books. It started changing my way of thinking. So I don't use the internet for like social stuff, but I use it for this because now, because of this, I'm sitting here with you, Glenn, you know, and that right. wouldn't have happened any other way, right? The, listen, I got all these apps on my phone that I don't use. I got to log on and sign in. I don't do any of that. The one thing I learned how to do was watch drummers on YouTube and that's it. Yeah. 
but there is so much content. I, <laughs> you you know, everybody knows you can spend the next 25 years of your life just watching drummers on YouTube. Right. But I saw that first video of yours. I don't I don't remember what it was. I just remember it was on the shorts channel. I thought it was great. I subscribed the first one I saw and I've been getting these your notifications ever since. And and like I said, your instructions to get on this were concise enough that even I was able to figure it out. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you I'm glad you made it here and I hope you stick with me. Uh, and again, you know, talk, talking to Angelo and some of these guys that that are in the app, uh, my app is designed, you know, with that in mind, because I was like that. <laughs> I was very, <laughs> you know, not really super tech savvy when it came to that stuff. You know, I would luckily, you know, I had gotten a little bit into editing, like video editing uh, a few years back because I started having to do that for Vic Firth. So I kind of had to carve that out. And it took me a long time to figure that stuff out. But right, right. it's like anything, you know, you do it enough, you start doing it a lot, you get good at it. Social media was like that too. You know, I didn't know anything for Instagram. I had my young students. I was like, it's all, it's all emojis. It doesn't tell you where home is. It doesn't, it's like, you got to know what that means, what that little symbol means. To get <laughs> and, and after a while, like anything, you do it every day, you start getting good at it. Uh, I don't necessarily love platforms, but I do love this. I love the fact that I can reach drummers that I would have never reached otherwise by doing it this way. Um, and to me, that's the most important thing. That's really what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to build this community. That's why I'm, right, doing, I, you know, that's, that's, I, why, that's why I'm here, you know, seriously. I called this a platform cause I didn't know what else to call it. Uh, I realized the value of the internet immediately. I just don't understand how to use it and learn all the symbols because I never bothered with it. The last, <laughs> the last thing I ever learned was the definition of the, the four letters for MIDI, M-I-D-I, -I, uh, Musical Information Digital Interface. And that's, that's going back to the 90s. Right. <laughs> the, the technology is just mind-blowing. And yeah, that's a, you, you hit it on the head. That's how we're all able to be seeing and hearing each other right now yeah I, you know, I, it's, uh, I mean to me there's value in that and and luckily you know i i kind of changed my paradigm i changed my way of thinking when it came to uh social media uh angelo what do you got you got your hand up yeah well, look i know some guys might be a bit shy to ask questions so i'll, I'll ask them for them ask you for them um first one is okay uh, if i get into this app is it just standalone and I'll never see you again? No. Or I is there actions? How yeah. do I know? How do I check my progress? How do I know if I'm getting better? Well, then so the app is something. The answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Let's, let's talk about it. If, if you guys want to hear about that a little bit. Yeah. So, so talking about the app, the app is absolutely interactive. Uh, so what I love about the app versus the website <laughs> is we have a whole community section. And the community section is completely interactive. It's kind of like a social media uh, but it's just the drummers in the app. And I'm trying my best to really keep that exclusive. So I just opened up uh, like a, my drum club. Like, I'm kind of ripping off Rick Beato where he does his Beato club um, where, where you could just name your own price, but you have to pay something, even if it's just 99 cents, you know, just to get in there to have access to the community on the app. Cause I want to keep the, the community on the app tighter than what you see on like uh, Instagram or what you see on YouTube or, you know, I also want to kind of get the fish, the trolls out because you're going to get a lot of trolls <laughs> when you just do an open source thing. I want this a positive and interactive environment where there's just students in there that are serious about getting better uh, and interacting. And what I, it, the thing that I, that the app has kind of grown into with our practice journal is guys like you, Angelo posting your practice every day. That is huge. So you get to see, Guys like Angelo, this laundry list of stuff that he works on when he wakes up, it's inspiring. You know, it's inspiring to me. It reminds me of, you know, the days where I used to just sit there and practice for seven hours a day <laughs> with that with that list of stuff that he's got going on. Um, and I'd love to get more into that stuff with the app. But we're going to work on leaderboards. We're going to work on like, you know, kind of, kind of putting everybody like in some friendly competition in terms of like who's working on what. And I'd also like to do like certificates and gamification and all that kind of stuff. That's all coming down the bench. Uh, but the thing with the app is that it is interactive. So if I, if I want to reach you, Angelo, I just do at Angelo in, inside of that community and you'll get a push notification on your phone that says Jay is trying to reach you. Or likewise, if you guys want to reach me, I'm completely available. You just at J in the app and, you know, it sends me a notification and I could get right back to you. Uh, so that's something the app has that the website never had. And 
that's a game changer. It's making everything very, very, very different. Um, and again, there's tons of information there. But someone had mentioned was Glenn that was talking about there's so much information on YouTube. And I know people talk about Drumio. And I, don't, I haven't been on Drumio in a long time. But again, it's like a fountain. There's so much information that it's like you don't know what's important. You know, the, my goal is always to try to cut through all that and say, this is what's most important. This is where you want to start. This is where you want to put your time. And until you have this thing down, don't move on to this thing. You know, really try to get this first thing together and then move on. It's all about the path. It's all about creating that workflow of beginner to pro, which is what we're going to talk about in uh, on, on lesson on Saturday. Um, so, so again, for the guys on Instagram as well, the whole concept of this workshop, uh, I tried something a little different this year, uh, is I polled my audience. I did it on YouTube. I did it on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, and I asked the question, if you had the opportunity to sit down with me and ask me any two questions about drums, what would they be? And I got like hundreds of hundreds of questions from people. The, these three lessons that I'm putting together right here are the culmination of the most popular, the top three questions I was getting over and over again. The first one was foundation, like what you guys are talking about. How do, what, what do I do? What's, where do I start? What do I do? What do I focus on, you know, to, to get started, to really get that foundation together? So that's what we focused on today. Uh, the next lesson was going to be that whole mentality of how a beginner thinks versus how a pro thinks, you know, and it's a, it's a different head. You know, beginners have that thing where they think that sticking is the best thing. <laughs> you know, I want to sound fast. I want to have chops. You know, I want to be complicated. Pros don't think like that. Pros have been through that and they know where the meat and potatoes are. They know it's about playing with the click. It's about locking in with the band. It's, it's listening to the producer. It's understanding where, where you need to play, picking your spots, all those kind of ideas. How to work with a band, how to command a band. That's very different than sitting in your basement playing along to a record. When you're on a bandstand in front of an audience, that's a different energy. You know, they're relying on you for the time. You're, you can't parrot or play on top of the drummer that's on the recording. You're the drummer. They're following you. And that could feel like driving a city bus if your time isn't solid, if you're not confident. Uh, and the other thing we talk about in that next video is that whole idea of feeling. And how you feel projects to your audience. And this is a huge thing that people a lot of times don't understand. So if you get behind the kit and you feel nervous, oh shit, I got to play right now in front of these guys, that nervous energy is going to project to the audience. They're going to hear insecure and nervous, which is probably not what you want. But if you sit down at the kit and you project confident, excited, angry, in love, any, any kind of emotion that's like passionate, and you just play that, even if it's simple, the audience will feel that. And pros harness that. Pros are able to take that idea of how they're feeling and just project it on the kit. And it almost doesn't matter what they're playing. Yeah, sure, flat, fast chops are great, but how many drum solos have you seen where the guy's just, uh, check, God, uh, check, God, goo, goo, God, uh, and that's his whole solo, and it sounds amazing, and you're just like, yeah. What's the difference? It's that confidence. It's him putting forth that energy on top of what he's doing. That transcends technique. That's when technique is at the back of your brain. Foundation is all the way back there. And now you're focusing on that end of it. And that's a huge thing to get. The third topic that people kept on asking over and over again, which I couldn't believe, but it just kept on coming up was gear. Everyone was asking me about gear. Everyone was asking about tuning, drum setup. How do I pick out cymbals? How do I pick out drums? What kind of sticks do I use? Uh, things like that. Those questions kept on coming up over and over and over again. So the third lesson is going to be all about gear. You know, we're going to talk about that. Um, again, for the Instagram guys, uh, jump into this because the only way you could access these lessons is being part of my community. You have to join the email group. Um, there's tons of incentives for you guys to get in and do that. Uh, and I'd love, to I'd love to see you in here. My motivation for this is to build the community. Okay. This is not just selfless. I'm not just saying, oh, I'm just doing this for the drum community. I want to build a community and I want a tight community. I want a community centered around this way of teaching, this way of studying the drums. And I want you guys, I want the best players in here. So that's, that's what I'm trying to cultivate what, by doing this whole, this whole thing, if that's clear. Um, yeah, so that kind of sums it up. The fourth lesson is going to be talking about that. It's going to be talking about applying all this stuff, uh, how you can get into the app, all the things that I have down the pipe. And, uh, and that's going to wrap us up once, once we're done with the week. Does anyone have any questions on that stuff that's coming up? Um, Raise your hand if you do. 
because I know that was a lot. I threw a lot at you just there. <laughs> and some other people that I'm seeing here on the call, Julieta, I think I saw you when you signed up and you said, I'm glad, I'm glad you found your way here. Welcome. Um, I know you, you might just be listening, but uh, welcome to the group. It's good to see you. Um, but yeah, any of these other guys like Stefan up there, do you have, uh, you have any questions that I can answer for you? If not, we're, we might be calling it a night. George, do you have anything else you want to throw in before we wrap it up for today? I'm, I'm a spectator, man. No, you know. <laughs> I'm having you here, man, because you guys don't even understand that you have like a wealth of knowledge uh, sitting in on this group that's just like, you know, hanging out. This guy is like an amazing, amazing player. So Glenn, if you don't have any social media, it's worth it just getting on Instagram or TikTok just to check out what Skinny George is do doing. Um, yeah, he, I'll have to learn how to do that as, <laughs> as I do it. I'll have to well, figure it YouTube. out. You're have on somebody YouTube. show me. Right. Well, you're on YouTube already. Uh, George, what's your handle on YouTube again? It's, it's Skinny, Skinny George, same thing. It's, it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. So Skinny yeah. George what? Just Skinny George. Just, search just Skinny, Skinny George. George. Yep. All right. YouTube is very easy. You don't have to log on or sign in. Right. I, I Listen, I, I know my password. That happens to be the, the model of drumstick I use. I'm like the only guy I know that uses my stick model. And it, when I put it in, it, the system will tell me it's invalid, even though I know that's the password. <laughs> Apparently, if, if you don't use them, they time out. They become invalid from not using them. We got to get this. And then you got to come up with new ones. That's it. Uh, but YouTube doesn't require that. There's no logging on or signing in. You just you're in right away. And you could watch. I, yeah. Jay, I learned. I never. I you know how many of your shorts I watched before I figured out how to post a comment. <laughs> I I'm like the the most recent person at posting comments. I just recently began doing it. Uh, because on YouTube it's very easy. There's no logging on. There's no signing in. You don't need anything. And my name is coming up as my name when I post a comment because I don't know how to change it. I don't know how you make a nickname for yourself. So it's just right. Google. Google right owns YouTube. Google knows. Google knows everything about all of us. Uh, <laughs> Google knew my name and created it. When I, when I posted a comment, it just said, you are publicly posting a comment as Glenn Dalek. And right. that's why you see in my real name, I don't know. And I don't care that you see in my name. I don't really give a shit. So you see my name, big deal. But I don't even know how to make a nickname because that's right. how that's how illiterate and deficient my internet skills are. But well, I'll figure it out. I want to check out. I want to check out George's play. And George, YouTube is easy. I'll find you on there. Good. Good man. Do it. Everyone else should too. Definitely go check out Skinny George and uh, check out his content. Listen, the only thing I will add, uh, Jay, for everybody that's listening and watching, um, is that I, I, I'll speak on, on behalf of myself. I don't know if you guys feel the same way about your drumming and, and the way you approach practice and drumming and all of that, but um, I think a lot of times we're we're kind of like our worst critic. Uh, we get really we 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 like bash our playing a lot. Like, no, no, I mean, I, I got so far to. Every time I watch a Benny Greb video, I'm just like, give me a break. I'm like, I'm just going to throw away the <laughs> fair, you know? And, um, and I just want to remind you that, like, all of our journeys are at, at different levels, at different times in our lives, different seasons in our lives. And um, what, like, even though the, 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 uh, what, what's the, uh, like, the, we're trying to achieve a certain level of perfection or uh, refinement, but don't lose sight of all the fun, okay? Like, I mean, you've got to make sure that, if you want to do this for the rest of your life, whether you get on the stage ever in your life or not, it has nothing to do about what spotlight you're on, how many followers you have. It has nothing to do with that. Um, if I was doing this because I wanted more followers, I mean, give me a break. You know, but like <laughs> I just have a blast trying to see like, wow, I suck. I need to get better at this. Let's see if I can do it. You know, so just make sure that whatever you're learning and whatever platform, or whatever you're doing with Jay and all of that, you got to remember that drums honestly is the funnest instrument i don't care what anybody says i don't trumpet blah, 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 clarinet like I, they're all they all suck the best instrument <laughs> that the most fun is drums so like i'm gonna put that on the internet you said that george yeah. <laughs> i agree with you no but seriously because you know i i get it like when i'm making my videos man i mean i'm like oh another take that suck come on george you get yourself and like sometimes i just forget like hey like this is this is also just a lot of fun and when yeah. you have a lot of fun doing something, you're going to continue to do it and growth and speed and all of that will come. 
if you yeah. enjoy what you're doing. So anyway, just as those two cents. As I call that, we call that the rock star mentality. That's why I call everybody in my group, I call them rock stars. Because it's like, if you have that rock star mentality, it doesn't matter if you're in your basement playing or you're in an arena in front of 30,000 people. It's having that same rock star head. And that rock star head is fun, right? Because why do we strive to be a rock star? We don't, we don't, we don't do it, you know, we do it for the, because being a rock star is freaking cool. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, you're the man when you're a rock star, but you could feel like that, whether you have the big gig or not. You know, I was arguing with another guy uh, on social media. Uh, we were talking something about mastery. Um, and it's the whole, you know, my whole definition of mastery is that if you've put a, a certain amount of practice into something, you eventually become a master. If you've crossed some kind of threshold of putting this amount of time into it. His definition of mastery was you have to have a big gig. You have to have a big break. You can't be a master unless you have a big break. And I had a lot of problems with that because I'm like, I know a lot of masters that never got a big break. Again, we're talking with Glenn over there. We talked about Frank Bellucci, who's a master. He's a master at the drums, but he never really got a big giant break. In the drum community, everyone doesn't know his name. Like they know Jojo Mayer or Thomas Lang or somebody like that. Uh, he didn't get that break, but he's every bit as competent as those guys. You know, the, the, the difference is when you see Frank Bellucci. Yes, Jeff Berlin basketball. called him a great player. Oh, yeah. Dude, he's, <laughs> Had a gig. He's a mom. I've, 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 seen, it, I've seen him on so many gigs and, and like roadied for him so many times when I was, when I was younger. Uh, I mean, he is an absolute master. I mean, everything that he does. I saw him open for Steve Smith uh, doing a drum clinic. And uh, before they started playing, Smith took out a cardboard box and was like, Cheech, come here. Everyone calls him Cheech. They said, Cheech, come here. Get a, let's, let's warm up a little bit with the brushes on a cardboard box. So it's Smith playing the brushes and Bellucci. And they're just playing, doing the, the stirring the soup thing. And then they start trading. And Smith was doing something and it would be super amazingly cool. And then Bellucci would do something. And then Smith would do that. Yeah. Uh, the gig, one of the gigs I saw him at, at these free shows in, in Long Beach, Long Island. Yeah. It was it was Frank on drums and Jeff Berlin on on bass right. and Rachel Z on piano. Okay. And Rachel Z's husband is Omar Hakim. Oh, okay, sure. So he was he was hanging out for the show because oh, yeah. you know, they're married. Uh, I think he might have played in a band later on. It's a whole series of groups, all whatever. It was good. I don't even know if these shows go on anymore. I was going to them years ago. Yeah. Uh, I haven't been to one in a long time. But that, that's how I know who you're talking about. I also know Frank from some drum clinics. Yeah, he did yeah. a clinic with uh, with Rod Morgenstein yep. and Joe oh, Franco. Yeah, I, all 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 of them. I was at them. I was at them all. I met him. I got to know yeah. him. He got to hang Bill out Boy, with him. Played, really Tom. cool guy. He played, he played with all those guys. And it's like, I just remember him going back and forth with Smith. And Smith, after Frank did something, put down the brush and was just like, dude, I don't even know what that is. He's like, I, I don't even know what you just did. This was Steve <laughs> Smith. He was just like, I, he's like, I, I, I don't even understand wow. what happened there. And 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 Blue, she's smiling, ah, you know. And Smith was like, no, seriously, I, I'm I'm considering going out there and being like, this guy can't go on before me. <laughs> and everyone cracked up laughing. He even went out and said that on the mic when he went to introduce Frank. He was like, okay, guys, I got to introduce this next drummer. He's going to come out before me. And he almost got fired from this spot after I heard him play in sound check. Uh, you know, and and it was joking, but it was a little bit. Like <laughs> a little seriousness in his voice. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, there's masters out there, uh, but the difference between, you know, again, that, that master, that pr pro level is all about what George saying. It, it's being able to harness that idea of, of loving it, you know? And when you see guys play that love it and they, and they, and they're able to emote that love, that's when they sound amazing. That that's all you need. That's really the ingredient. Unfortunately, it's hard to get there when you're not confident. So it's hard to be confident if you don't have a good foundation. You can't get a good foundation unless you practice your ass off. So, and, and a lot of guys get so wrapped up in that practice that it stops becoming fun. And then that whole circle gets broken, you know? So you always have to understand, you know, where you're going. And something we talk about all the time in the mentorship and in the app is outcome. And we're going to talk about that a lot in this uh, workshop as well. Knowing your outcome, knowing where you're going is so important. Instead of just practicing paradiddles, you got to say, why am I practicing paradiddles? What's my outcome? What am I trying to do? For me these days, and I'm sure for George too, like George was saying, sometimes I'll, I'll go say, okay, I got to play this video. Someone asked a question or challenged me. There's my outcome. 
Now I have to come up with exercises to practice to be able to play that video in two hours from now and not spend a hundred takes trying to get it, you know? So I got to practice my ass off to be able to do it. Uh, and that, that's a very powerful way of practicing because you're starting at the outcome and you're reverse engineering, you're working backwards. And that's something I think professionals are great at doing. They're really great at understanding and knowing their outcome before they sit down to work on something. It's very easy to spin your wheels. So that's just something that you could, uh, you could take to the bank a little bit. Uh, with that, I think we're already a little bit over on time here. Uh, anyone have anything else to wrap up before I, uh, I call it for today? This was such a pleasure, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for taking the workshop, for watching the videos. Thank you, George, for, for, for chiming in. It was awesome to see you. Uh, thank you for everybody on Instagram. Again, for you guys on Instagram that are watching, sign up for the, the email list and uh, get into this um, workshop. I'd love to see you in there. Uh, and the next one we do, uh, which will probably be on Saturday, uh, let's see some of you guys joining in, okay? All right, guys, thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next call. Have a good one. Good night. Thank you, Jay. You got it. Thanks, Jay. Good night. Good night, Graham. Go get some sleep. Take it easy. I feel like I've met you. <laughs> you too, man. I got this the other day. Ah, oh, there it is. That's the in book. German. <laughs> oh, in German. Oh, nice. Yeah, I doing? wanted it in English, but I've got That's it in good. German. But yeah. George, do you, uh, do, you, do you check out Gary Vee? you follow Gary Vee? Gary Vaynerchuk? I've seen a bunch of clips of him all the time. He always pops up. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's the man. He's the guy that got me into this, to be honest. Like his teaching is the guy that got me turned around when it came to social media. But yeah, very very hip. Right. So all right, Jay, guys. you are great. You're great at using this technology. <laughs> I, I watch your shorts. I don't even know how you're able to superimpose the drum beat on the top as you're doing it, or all, all that that the, the the software that you that involves in making these videos. I noticed your laptop turned in the screen looked like a mixing board at one point, like I'm looking at a mixing console. I, it's just unbelievable the amount of stuff you need to just make a decent half a minute video. You are great at it. You're really good at it. Thank you. Thank you. It's, again, a lot of it's just practice like anything. Doing it day in, day out. You know, you start figuring out ways of, of you know, asking questions from other guys and you just get good at it, you know? Uh, I mean... Also, to me, to me, you... You are on the same level as Frank Lucci to me. If I'm if I'm going through YouTube or just tapping on notifications just to see what they are, it takes a lot for me to subscribe to somebody. If I'm <laughs> subscribed to you, it means I have nothing I have total nothing but respect for your playing and ability and I, skills. I, I, that means so much. And you also have the knowledge to be able to explain it, which is a pleasure uh that's it i spent i spent 25 30 years as a, a new york city school teacher of of all things now i had big kids earth science in the high schools uh and you got to learn how to explain that's it to get you might have to explain the same thing three four different ways at, to get everybody to understand it i don't know you're good at very good at explaining but it's not your teaching ability that made me subscribe to you. I could really not even care about that. It was your playing ability is the reason I subscribe to you. You are a monster player. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, little video you did of got a match with the with the woman scat singing Chick Corea's keyboard part, and you were just comping along to got a match. That was great. That was <laughs> that was fantastic. And that, that, that that was a little that was a little rusty because uh, I used to play that song in a band. Believe it or not, we were in a Chickory tribute band, and I played it like every week. And then you don't do it for like six or seven years, <laughs> and you try to do it again. You're like, wait a second, this doesn't feel the same, you know. So, like anything, man, you know, you got to keep up on it. It's one of those things. Well, listen, I really appreciate all that, Glenn. Thank you so much for for following. You got it. Yeah. It means, you know, again, this is why I do this stuff. It means means the world to me. And uh, guys, thank you so much, and uh, have a great night, George. You and I just got to hook up on one of these, just one-on-one -on -one, one of these days and, and catch up. Yeah, man, for real. Yeah, let's do it. It was a pleasure, James. It was a pleasure. You're in, uh, you're, you're in Florida? Is that where you are? Yeah, yeah. That, like, South, like Miami, basically, yeah. You're in Miami, so you're on, you're on the East Coast. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because we were planning on coming down to Florida at some point. I was like, man, I got I to gotta see where George is and meet up with him somewhere. <laughs> Let me know, man. I, I, I've already met a few people in person from like my Instagram days. It's, 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 I, I it's seen such it. a blast, man. Like, yeah, that, that, that's very cool. Yeah, there's a couple of guys. Uh, Steve Velasquez uh, is another another guy, on, on if you follow him. 
Yeah, he's, yeah. Like, he, he's in Virginia, so he's actually not far. We've talked a couple of times. And he came. He came a, a, a year ago on vacation. Oh no, kidding! And then we met up, and then like like I met up, and we met up in this kind of like this area where we had breakfast together. And then I brought two pads and two pairs of sticks. And he's like, "Oh, that's you amazing. brought pads." I'm like, "Heck yeah, we're in the, we're in the draw. Are you kidding me?" <laughs> and he's like, "Dude, I don't know, man. Now I'm nervous. I'm like, you know, like I'm like, get the heck out of here. You're uh, a monster, you know. Like he's a beast, bro. He's a beast. Yeah, no, he's great. He's great. Yeah, now he reached out to me. He's like, he did a video which was like, um, he did take five and then he modulates it to seven. Yeah, and it was, it was a great video. It blew yeah. up and. and yeah. he, he uh, reached out to me and he's like, Jay, yeah, so I did this video. I was like, yeah, the video is amazing. Dude. You're doing that great. It sounds awesome. He's like, yeah, but I don't really completely understand what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'd love to sit with you and maybe you could actually show me what I'm doing here. That's today. awesome. You know? and, uh, and I was like, you know, I mean, we could do that. Um, but I, I I find it hard to believe that someone that's that proficient doesn't really understand what's going Listen, on. Listen, but that's, you know, again, the stuff that you were talking about tonight, some of these guys that don't really get that, like the pros are still asking the questions. You know? Right. Well, and we all are. I yeah. still am too. And this guy's saying that, you know, I, I he, he thinks I sound a good Bellucci. I don't think I sent Sh Sean Bellucci shoes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, to this day, I'm sure I could sit down next to Frank and like, yeah. look, Smith sat down next to that guy and was like, ah, you know. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, there's always somebody, and I'm sure if you talk to any one of those guys, they have somebody that oh, they sure. always, you know, for Blue, he was like Morello. He's like, I'd watch Morello play and I would just be like, what the hell? What is that? Like, what is going on? You know? Yep. So. Yeah. All right, man. Dude, it was a pleasure, man. It's great. It's great seeing you in your element, doing your thing, man. That's awesome. I'd love to get it out of the house and put it into a separate space. Yeah. I was watching a, um, Mike Johnston's video where he was showing his whole studio. Did you did you see that video? Yeah. And I was like, drooling awesome. watching that episode. <laughs> like, okay, I'm sitting there like, like oh God. how many sets? How many sets of symbols? Like, give me a break. Dude, so I mean, good, good for what a hustle. What a he's yeah, no, he's 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 hustling. Um yeah, he's, been one, he's been one of the guys, uh like this is really random, but I mean, like, there's been a lot of guys that have been asking me for for hand lessons. Right. And I'm like, Mike, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, beast. that's exactly what I'm talking about, dude. But he's just like, nah, no, but like, but you, you, you've got some stuff. I need, I, I need, I need like an hour with you. I'm like, all right, no, that's, yeah. all right, sure. Or Johnny yeah. Rabbit. Well, I'm this. telling you, man, you have that shit together. You do. You have that shit like super together. I can't do some of the shit that you're doing. A couple of times, I, I've seen some of your videos. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> well, I can guarantee that you could, I could probably do a lot less of what you're doing than what you can do with mine. Uh, right you know, but again, that's what Angelo was asking about different teachers, and that's the beauty of it, man. Yeah, that's yeah. Beauty, because everyone's got something different, and, and it's like that's why you don't yeah. want to stick with one guy. You want to you want to jump to different guys and get different, okay. you know, because it's not about this guy's better than that guy. It's what does this guy have to offer? What is this guy saying? Yeah, you yeah. know, talking to Blucci when he had to open for Virgil Donati. Oh, I remember, I remember asking him. I'm like, dude, you got to do a drum clinic a clinic in front of like 500 drummers before Virgil Donati. That's crazy. How do you get your head around that? And yeah. his answer was literally, if you know Frank, he's got this Italian accent and he's just like, Jay, Virgil does his thing. I do mine. <laughs> that was his answer. <laughs> that was it. Virgil does his thing. I do mine. That's it. That's and it. That's, and he really has that. And that's, and, and it was like that when you watch the clinic, it was fantastic. Yep. And then Virgil was just a different thing. Yep. You know? Yep. So, I've always tried to embrace that because yeah. I know where I'm weak and I'm like, man, I, I, you know, I see guys like you and I'm like, yeah, I don't got that. <laughs> hey, hey, it's okay. Cause what I don't got, you got what you got, you know, like it, it all balances the whole thing out. You know, it's a beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. But we've got to do some work together. I definitely want to, I definitely want to, we got to collab more and we got to do some things together. Yeah, great. man. Absolutely. All right. Jay. I'll, I'll let you go. You have a great night and guys on Instagram. Thanks for bearing with us and following. Uh, again, join me in my email group so you can get on this full version and uh, we'll take it from there. Have a good night, everybody. Later, man.